Hey, it's Harry from PB Tech, and today we're going to check out a couple of affordable, high-end gaming laptops made by Acer. Acer is a Taiwanese company, known for manufacturing elite gaming range Predator. Specifically, we're going to be getting friendly with two of the seven current Predator notebooks, namely the Helios 300 and Helios 500. Gaming laptops in general are considered a luxury device for gaming because you have to pay a premium price for the portability that they offer. But perhaps Acer has found a decent compromise. Hmm. First off, let's get to know some facts. Yes, gaming laptops can be about 30% more expensive than a desktop with the same specs. But with a laptop, you're saving on costs like a monitor and a keyboard, so the price could work out roughly the same. Gaming laptops are obviously 100% more portable than a desktop because they're more compact, but that means they also become hotter, which makes the fans work louder and harder, reducing its performance by up to 10%. Hmm, the plot thickens. But more on this later. Gaming laptops have never been more worth it. For since the release of NVIDIA's 10 series graphics card last year, one of the biggest downsides of gaming on a laptop versus a desktop has been reduced significantly. Before the 10 series was released, there was a 50% performance reduction with a gaming laptop. Now that's been decreased massively to just 10%. So back to the Helios Bros. They're different ages and different sizes, but what makes them brothers, huh? Well, to find out, let's do an overview of their shared features before we take a closer look at each of them individually. Both of these have an Intel i7-8750H processors, so you're getting a decent amount of power to run the latest titles in gaming. Also, the i7 is just past the peak of retaining the most power for your dollar. Even though an i9 would be much more powerful, it also escalates the price significantly. The processors are both able to be overclocked, boosting your laptop's performance past its advertised speeds, at the cost of hotter temperatures and louder fans. When any tech is pushed past its limits for a long period of time, there was always the element of risk involved. So to ease your thoughts, Acer have developed a monitoring software aptly named Predator Sense, so you can take absolute control when you need it most. Moving on, the Helios Bros both have 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of SSD, and one terabyte of hard drive space. That solid state drive will be great for saving your current game files too, to get them faster loading speeds. Their final shared toy is that they have the same screen resolution at 1080p Full HD. So do you think these shared qualities make them enough to be brothers? Because where they differ is in screen size, screen speed, aesthetics, and in graphics. Only a few things. The 300 has a 15-inch 60Hz panel, whereas the 500 has a 17-inch 144Hz panel. Also, the 300 has a GTX 1060 in it, and the 500 has a GTX 1070. The faster screen combined with the superior graphics should complement each other nicely in the 500. On another note, you may have seen these Kiwi lads online somewhere before, but they probably had different accents. If you don't understand what I mean by this, well, it's important to know that every computer distribution area around the world has its own variation of the same products. And this goes for the Helios Bros too. Overseas, you may have seen them come in slightly different colors, different resolutions, processors, and even screen sizes. But these two loyal guys right here are proper Oceanians. The Predator Helios 300 was first released from its cage in July 2017. The name Predator definitely fits here because this machine sounds, feels, and performs like a real animal. It's loud and hot, but it's fast. With a max fan noise reaching 55 decibels and temperatures reaching 60 degrees, it also has a battery that lasts over an hour when playing games and up to four hours while watching videos. The first thing this dangerous Predator strikes you with is the back of its lid. It's got a brushed metal finish, which I personally am a fan of. However, it does have a porous texture to it, so it does leave a few fingerprints behind. I'm also not too sure about this plastic lip here on the top. The black and red colors, however, I think are a great choice, which is accented with this chrome around the outside of the touchpad and the base of the keyboard. Finally, the color scheme is complemented by these backlit LEDs here we have on the keys. Now then, on to the one question that only 2018 kids will remember to ask. But mum, does it even Fortnite? The Helios 300 runs Fortnite on epic mode at 80 FPS, and with a 60 hertz screen, that's 20 more frames per second than you actually need. Nice. Something that I picked up on that I wasn't too fond of was despite the red backlit LEDs complementing the color scheme, they only fixed the red. And also the touchpad is quite tough to push in, but I'm more of a tapper, so that wasn't too much of an issue. As I mentioned, the Helios 300 does get quite warm while gaming. Attempting to tame this beast 
are some special Aeroblade 3D fans. But even with those fans, it's still much louder than the 500 because of its compact size. While we're on the topic of airflow design, I noticed on the back of the laptop that half of the exhausts are covered up for looks. I just think Acer could have been a little bit more ingenuitive here. Even while playing indoors, I found that the screen was hard to see if there was too much ambient light. And even though you're probably going to be gaming with a headset on, I did find that the speakers on the 300 were a little bit treble heavy. A year after the release of the Helios 300, Acer managed to find 200 more of something from somewhere and launched the Acer Predator Helios 500 in June 2018. You, like me, may have thought that this is simply the 17-inch version of the Helios 300, but that isn't the case, since overseas, the 300 comes in a 17-inch edition. So what you're getting here is an exaggerated airflow redesign, so it can handle some upgraded graphics. The Helios 500 is definitely the cooler, younger brother. He's puffed up his chest to allow for a lot more airflow, most noticeably in the interesting design here on the back. However, I do prefer another relative's more symmetrical design to this one. But I'm not much of a booty man, so it's okay. Contributing to its size, there's a subwoofer hidden in the base here, which is an excellent inclusion. It really lets you hear where your enemies are in Fortnite without needing the use of a headset. Hmm, yes, quite. But how Fortnite does it Fortnite? The 1070 graphics card is capable of running Fortnite at 144 frames on high settings. Yes! The stars must have aligned, because 144 frames on a 144Hz screen means you're getting exactly what you paid for, since your screen will be displaying the same amount of images at the speed that your hardware is producing them at, creating the smoothest visual experience feasible. To guarantee that this indeed happens, the 500 comes with a widely regarded feature called G-Sync that maintains this balance of the force. I wasn't really a fan of the baby blue colour they chose around the WASMD keys and on the Predator logo here on the lid. But this blue aesthetic does make a little bit more sense once you turn on the blue backlit LEDs. Ooh. I'm also not a fan of the LED status here beneath the screen, which I found to be distracting. Usually I wouldn't mind such a small detail, but because of the ambient light that affects your screen, you're probably going to be playing somewhere dark. And this means that the LED flashing really stands out. Also, with only an hour of battery life, it's most probable you're going to be connected to a power supply when playing. And this turns on a bright orange LED, which I think kind of detracts from the blue aesthetic. Thankfully on the 500, the aforementioned Predator Sense is once again here to save the day, with zone control over the backlit colours. Because the 500 is so thick, I found that my arm actually fatigued while it was elevated off of the table. I don't currently use a notebook, so this may be something I have to get used to. Alternatively, it's something my waifu could help me out with. First thing we got is one of these mouse pads that I hate. Oh, this is the life. This is actually the dream. So, which Helios laptop should you buy? Or any gaming laptop for that matter, because despite portability, all gaming laptops are overpriced, aren't they? Well, aren't they? Maybe not. Here's an in-depth comparison, which you might find enlightening. We've crunched the numbers, and we compared the Helios 300 to a same-spec desktop plus peripherals, and it turns out the Helios is $15 cheaper. Hmm. We also crunched the numbers on the Helios 500 to a same-spec desktop plus peripherals, and it turns out that you'd be saving $865 with the Helios. Hmm. Seems like it's worth it to me. But let's do a fairer comparison. Let's compare the Helios Bros to their gaming laptop equivalents. The Helios 300's closest rival around these parts is the Gigabyte Sabre 15. The Gigabyte has twice as fast a screen at 120Hz, but it's $200 more, and it's got an arguably poorer build quality. I think this Predator is safe on top of that food chain. Nice! But over in the blue corner, weighing in at a slightly higher price bracket to its little brother, it's the Predator Helios 500 and his competition lurking over there in the red corner with the fastest screen response speed in the world is the Asus ROG GM501. Ding ding. Even though the GM501 holds a world title, it's still no match for the same spec Helios 500 that doesn't charge its sponsors an extra $725 for an inflated brand name and a prettier, leaner face. Oh, don't take it personally, bro. <laughs> Performance, portability, and price. These are the three main factors to consider when choosing a gaming laptop. For example, if the performance or portability of a laptop is greater, the price goes up. 
and if they're worse, the price goes down. This is where the Helios Duo dominate one of these factors. I believe they monopolize on the best performance for the lowest price at the cost of portability and, well, aesthetics. Meaning that you're getting a great deal for their intended purpose, gaming, but they're somewhat cumbersome and perhaps mediocre in the looks department? This becomes most prominent from the 300 up to the 500. But if aesthetics are the only thing lacking in these bad boys, then that's the best case scenario. Because when you go and balls to the walls against Dragon Slayer 69, looks don't count for shit. Well, 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 that's about it. Well, that's about all I've discovered so far. Thanks for watching. Links to all the current prices of the Predator 300 and 500, along with all the parts and competitors mentioned will be in the description. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.